That all changed, of course, in Kilmore, the summer of second year. God, the Dublin girls, gorgeous creatures, swimming in their T-shirts and smoking by the age of nine. <laughs> Every summer, a wave of these beauties would descend on Kilmore Quay like, like dirty angels. And the language out of them, it was all you fucking need. And here, have you any fag? Real exotic language. Devil it was down with her mammy and three sisters in a two man tent for a month above in Myler's Field. She had a face of makeup on her so thick you could have drawn pictures in it with a stick, and hair that looked like she'd been electrocuted. <laughs> I'd never seen the like of it in me life. Besotted is the word. And the pair of us were staying with my granddad in the village. And you got off with that one from Carla. Arms and her that would crush a bear. <laughs> Jesus, where did she end up? I suppose they must have had to release her back into the wild at this day. <laughs> I'm only joking. Lovely girl. Anyway, the long and the short of it was while you were gallivanting about with Grizzly Adams there, I was left mooning after Dervila from Dublin. Not a hope. So long all of sure she wouldn't look the ones, not a mind twice. But anyway, this particular weekend anyway, me mam took me down to whole store to get the new shoes for the back to school. Win Stanley. Couldn't believe it. With the studs hammered into the heel. And I remember thinking, if I can't get the shift in these shoes, then I might as well throw in the towel and join the Franciscans. So off with me down to the harbour and a bit click clacking away. And sure enough, there's Dervila and the sisters hooched up on the key wall, licking their 99s. So the plan was to stroll past, looking all cool, knocking up the few sparks. <laughs> but then don't I spot me young cousin, Bob O, sitting on the edge of the pier, the usual vacant expression on his face and he watching a crab or something scuttling round in the water below which now would be like an opera for young bob like. but he hears me coming anyway turns and sticks up the hands you see this was a cowboy thing myself and bob Oak used to he'd put up his hands and i'd shoot him anyway with me six gun Poof! no mercy and he'd fall down dead for a count of ten elephant one elephant Two elephant. <laughs> so anyway, he hears me coming anyway, turns, sticks up the hands, and I, I just poof, shoot him as per. And doesn't the feckin' Egypt keel over the edge of the pier? Now, I, I know that Bobo can swim, because if there's any coordination required involving more than two limbs, forget about it. I run to the edge of the pier in me triple-knotted new brogue, and there's the twit below. Shoes or cousin, cousin or shoes. But then I hear this squeal from behind me, all nasal and harsh. The bleeding spa is in the bleeding water. From the lips of an angel, Dervila, decision made. In I dive. That was no big deal, really. We'd all done the life saving at school. Have a badge stitched on to a pair of togs at home still. Show. Anyway, Bob Oak's trashing is threatening to drown the pair of us. So I shoot him again and he's off, counting elephants, so I can haul him into the shallows. But I can feel me shooting, filling up with water. Like blocks they were. And there was a crowd gathered at the slip to take him. And I should have been happy because he was alive after all. But all I could think about was me shoes wrinkling away before me eyes. Come here to me, you. Derville, pushing her way through the crowd. You saved that poor unfortunate. You're a bleeding hero, so you are. It was all I could do to just nod. Later I thought it a few comments, all right, like, every life is worth saving. That's what I do if I say bye. <laughs> but at the time now, all I seemed to manage was, uh, was a bit of gulping and spitting, which seemed to do the trick because she leaned in real close to me. And 
whispered something. What? I wasn't exactly sure, because her boob was touching my elbow like an electric shock, froze on the spot, and tried to concentrate all my awareness to that single point. Wanted to remember the sensation forever. I mean, you don't need a whole lot about it now, but the boob elbow is a powerful force, especially when a fella's 14. And then just like that, she was gone, her flip-flops slapping up the slipway. And my brain finally deciphered what she'd said. Behind the PR tonight. Well, I had me first grown up kiss that night. Oh, she was aggressive, lads, I say that. Oh, it was like now she was chawing on the turnip, wore the face off me. I had sore gums for a week. She gave me a good ten minutes. I suppose that's what Bob Oak's life was what <laughs> I thought more might happen, to be honest. You know, the, the Dublin factor and all. But she brought her sisters with her to observe proceedings, blowing chewing gum bubbles and passing comments like, look at these hands, girls, they're bleeding tiny. One of the younger ones called the halt eventually. Come on, devil, you promised Bobo 20 minutes. 20? I only got 10 for seven. Didn't she end up going out with Bob Oak for the rest of the summer? Any time he annoyed her, she just shot him. <laughs> the perfect boyfriend, she said. Ah, uh, yeah. There, she's a counsellor now for Sinn Féin, I believe. 